Hello and welcome to this video in which I will provide an introduction to multi-group confirmatory factor analysis and structural equation modeling. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. On Tuesdays I usually talk about an analysis in the M plus software and on Thursdays I present more general issues in multivariate statistical analysis including factor analysis, structural equation modeling, multi-level modeling and latent class and other mixture analysis. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional free resources, including a link to my weekly statistics newsletter, as well as free courses that I offer through Quantfish. In this video, I want to provide you with an introduction to multi-group analysis, and I want to show you why this is an analysis that you should consider whenever you are comparing different groups, for example, with regard to their means and other potential, potentially interesting parameters. So let's talk about group comparisons. This is something that we're often interested in in the social sciences. We often have different known groups that we want to compare. For example, we want to look at gender differences on some construct, for example, spatial abilities or intelligence or anxiety or we are interested in cross-cultural comparisons with regard to, for example, subjective well-being, or we might care to compare an experimental and a control group with regard to some treatment effect or to find out about treatment effects. And so group comparisons are frequently conducted in the social sciences. And we often do that by using methods such as a simple t-test for dependent or independent samples and we might use analysis of variance or ANOVA. Sometimes we use analysis of covariance or regression analysis for comparing groups with regard to their means. Now, comparisons of groups can also be conducted within the framework of factor analysis and structural equation modeling. And that has some key advantages over the methods that are more typically used, such as a t-test and analysis of variance, because structural equation models are a lot more flexible and powerful with regard to group comparisons, and they use latent variables. And so we'll see that that has a key advantage in the comparison of groups. It makes our ability to compare groups a lot more flexible. We can compare groups on a lot of different aspects, also ones that are related to the measurement model and measurement structure. And so it allows us to test things that we cannot test with standard procedures such as a t-test or ANOVA. So let's look into this a little bit in a little bit more detail. I'm going to base this off of multi-group confirmatory factor analysis or CFA, but the same principles here also apply to general structural equation models where you have a structural model with maybe a path analysis between latent variables. Why is it an advantage to use multi-group CFA to compare groups as opposed to using a t-test or ANOVA, for example. One key advantage is that a confirmatory factor analysis includes a measurement structure or measurement model where observed variables, typically multiple observed variables, are used to measure latent variables. And so Therefore, we can test whether the measurement structure with multiple indicators is equivalent across different groups. And we call that measurement equivalence testing or measurement invariance testing. Those two uh, terms are used interchangeably in the literature. I prefer the term measurement equivalence because it seems like slightly less complicated than invariance, where you have to think about something is not variant. What does that mean? So measurement equivalence, but I also use the term measurement invariance. And so this is something that cannot be tested with a t-test because usually we base that off of a single score that we just simply compare between different groups in terms of the means and uh, we assume that there is measurement equivalence, meaning that the relationship between the indicator and the underlying latent variable or factor is the same. For example, that the meaning of a scale is the same between different cultures, so that, for example, factor loadings and 
intercepts and other parameters are equivalent between groups. So that's implicitly assumed to be true for a t-test and analysis of variance, but it is it can be explicitly tested with multi-group confirmatory factor analysis. Furthermore, multi-group confirmatory factor analysis and also general structural equation modeling with latent variables involves latent variables, which means that the comparisons take place at the level of variables that are corrected for measurement error. And that's another huge advantage of this approach over other approaches because we're looking at variables that are free from measurement error. So they've been corrected for unreliability and therefore those comparisons, for example, with regard to uh, latent variable correlations, covariances, path, paths and so on are more accurate if we have a, an appropriate measurement model. So that's another advantage that we're using latent variables and therefore we, collect, we, sorry, we correct for unreliability and measurement error. And another advantage is that the group comparisons are not limited to comparisons of means. So in ANOVA and a t-test we usually assume or we usually look at the means. So we compare means between different groups. That's the purpose of these tests. And we cannot test, for example, different differences in variances, covariances, correlations, regression paths, measurement uh, parameters such as factor loadings. All that cannot be tested with a t-test. Then we have to use other tests like, for example, tests for variance homogeneity if we wanted to also test for different variances. But then we don't know are the variances differ different between different groups because one group has more error variance, more unreliability, so to say, um, or is it because there are true differences in the variances in the variability between the groups. And that's something that we can assess with multi-group confirmatory factor analysis and SEM because those allow us to separate true score variance from unreliable variance or measurement error variance and therefore then we can look at whether there are true differences in the variances between groups. That's another so say big uh, big thing, big advantage of this framework that it also includes all these tests under one common umbrella. So that's um, that's useful. And then also we have fewer assumptions to make with uh, structural equation modeling and factor analysis when we compare groups. For example, you know that, you know, probably that a t-test requires equal variances in the population. And this is something that is not required in SEM to compare the means of different groups. You don't have to do a variance homogeneity test and then resort to some other procedure if the variances turn out to be unequal between groups. So the, the CFA and SEM framework can easily handle unequal variances between groups. So it's more flexible, more powerful, and therefore worth considering when you are looking to uh, compare different groups. So let's look into this a little bit more. And I mentioned measurement equivalence or measurement invariance testing as one big advantage of the SEM and CFA framework. This is something that we do not test when we use a t-test or ANOVA, but with a factor model we can test this. And so let's look into this in a little bit more detail. According to Widerman and Rees, there are four different levels of measurement equivalence that can be distinguished. There's so-called configural factorial invariance, weak factorial invariance or metric invariance, strong factorial invariance, which is also known as scalar invariance, and there's strict factorial invariance as well. So these different levels can all be tested, and then we learn something already uh, about group differences from these invariance tests. And more importantly, we can ensure that our comparisons later on of latent variable means across groups, for example, are meaningful because they would only be meaningful under a sufficient level of measurement invariance. Otherwise, um, we might be comparing apples with oranges. So it's important to test measurement equivalence to make sure that really the different groups that we have are comparable, that there's a comparable measurement structure such that the variables are measured on the same scale and with the same units of measurement, with the same origin of measurement, so that latent means, for example, can be meaningfully compared, latent variances can be compared, latent covariances. 
So let's look at each of these um, to see what they actually mean. Configurable measurement equivalence or configurable measurement invariance is the weakest level of invariance where we only assume that we have the same number of factors across groups and the same pattern of indicator loadings, meaning the same variables are supposed to uh, load on equivalent factors. In this case, I have for simplicity just a one factor model that I'm assuming holds in both groups. So here the assumption would be that there's just one factor in each group and that the same three variables load onto this factor. If I had a model with two factors, for example, then I would assume that the same two factors are found in those groups and that the same variables load onto these factors in the same way. Now, this should always be tested first because if this model is already rejected, then other more, more stringent tests of measurement invariance are obsolete. It doesn't make sense to go um, to more restricted models with higher levels of measurement invariance when the configurable model is rejected. So we would test that first and see if that fits our data well. Next we would test a measurement model where parameters of the measurement model that you can see here are restricted. So you can see here in this measurement model, we have intercepts or additive constants, alpha IG. We have factor loadings, lambda IG, and we have measurement error terms, epsilon IG, for which we estimate variances. So this is a random effect, whereas these parameters alpha IG and lambda IG are fixed effects or constants. And so, these parameters are tested for invariance in different stages. With configurable invariance, there is no uh, constraint on these parameters, so they are all freely estimated, which, so meaning the groups can differ in the intercepts, they can differ in the factor loadings, they can differ in the measurement error variance. Uh, error variances, and that's all legitimate under configurable measurement invariance. The only requirement is that there be the same factor structure, the same number of factors and the same loading pattern. The next highest level of um, measurement invariance is weak or metric measurement invariance or equivalence. And with weak or metric measurement invariance, we have, as you can see here, a group invariant loading parameter, lambda i, you can see that the group index G has been dropped from the loading lambda I, which means that this loading can no longer vary across groups, whereas the intercepts still have uh, both an in index for the variable I and an index for the group G, and so do the measurement error terms here, because the only restriction with weak or metric invariance is that the loadings are invariant or equal across groups. So you can see this here in the measurement model where again you have no index G, so lambda 2 and lambda 3 are the same across groups. The first loading is the same anyway because it is fixed to 1 for identification in both groups, so there's also invariance with regard to that first reference indicator. And so how is this accomplished then or how is this tested? This is tested in structural equation modeling software by setting the loading parameters equal across groups or we can say by imposing equality constraints on those loadings which can be done in all structural equation modeling programs such as M+, Lavan, Lisserl, EQS, Amos and so on. So you can set those equal and then you can test the fit. You can look at the fit uh, in terms of a chi-square test of model fit, for example, and look at whether the chi-square test of model fit looks significantly worse for this model as compared to the configurable model, then we would see that uh, if that were the case, then weak or metric invariance would be rejected if this model fit worse than the configurable model. Now, when we have weak or metric measurement invariance, so assuming that this model fits the data well, then it would be legitimate to compare the variances of the true score variables here, tau1 and tau2, the latent factors across groups, because then we have the same units of measurement. The loadings ensure that we have the same units of measurement, for example, measuring temperature in Celsius, degrees Celsius in one group and then also measuring degrees Celsius degrees Celsius um, in the other group. So then we can compare the variances. The means we cannot yet compare because there might still be a different origin of measurement. So the um, alpha IG 
is the loading and uh, sorry the intercept and the intercept or additive constant determines the origin of measurement and this is since this is not group invariant there could be differences in the intercept in these in the starting point and so this would mean the temperature scale would not both potentially start at zero degrees celsius but one would start at a different um a different level and so therefore means could not yet be compared that would be the case if we also had strong or scalar measurement equivalents where not just the loadings but also the intercepts are group invariant you can see here that the index g has now been dropped also from alpha i so alpha i is no longer allowed to vary across groups and the loadings also aren't allowed to vary across groups and now, so say we have strong or scalar invariance, which allows us to then not only compare latent variances across groups, but also latent means. And that's often of key interest, obviously. So we often want to know, for example, is there a significant difference in mean memory performance across genders? Or is there a significant difference in depression across males and females? Or is there a difference between an experimental and a placebo condition for depression or something like that. And so we would look at the latent means. We would want to compare latent means under strong or scalar invariance. This is something that would be allowed or would be meaningful to do because now also the origin of measurement is the same across groups and therefore we can compare the scales of tau1 and tau2. They are directly comparable. Notice also that the latent variances here can be compared also they could already be compared with weak invariance, but notice that these are independent of the variances that are estimated for the error terms epsilon. And so what we would be comparing then here would be the true variances rather than variances that might differ due to measurement error. And that's another strength of this, this approach that the true score variances are estimated as separate parameters that are separate from the epsilon error variances and therefore they can be separately compared as we will see in the next step. The highest level of measurement equivalence, the next step is strict measurement equivalence where we have also invariant variances for the epsilon term so the variance parameter that is estimated for the error variable epsilon ig this variance var epsilon ig is equal to variance epsilon i for all groups meaning there is a um, group unspecific um, error variance for each item for each indicator so each indicator has a separate error variance but they are not allowed to differ between the groups under strict measurement equivalence now this allows you to test whether the different groups have the same amount of error in the scores and that might be of interest as well to know are there differences in how reliable the indicators are um, across the different groups. Now strict measurement equivalence is not required to compare latent variable variances or means or covariances between groups but it is nice to have because it would save you additional parameters there would be more parameters so that would be constrained equal across groups and sometimes it may be of interest to know whether different groups have equally reliable indicators so this is how multi-group factor analysis works you can you can see that you can compare a whole lot of different aspects in a model like this across groups by imposing equality constraints and modern programs for structural equation modeling such as m plus and lavan make the process very easy for you they have certain defaults that already facilitate the analysis of multiple groups and so it makes it really easy and it is something worth considering when you have um, group comparisons as part of your study it is worth looking into the structural equation modeling and factor analysis framework for such comparisons as long as you have a large enough sample that's maybe one drawback of these techniques that they don't work with a sample size of n equals 40 for example or n equals 60 those would typically be too small you would need a sample size that is larger there's no general rule but typically we want something that is larger than 100 maybe larger than 200 depending on what model you have um, how complex it is and how good your indicators are and other 
factors. But if you have a large sample, if you have multiple indicators, multiple items for your um, constructs or attributes of interest, then this is something that is worth looking into because it makes your uh, analysis of group differences a lot more flexible and a lot more powerful than when you use techniques such as a t-test or analysis of variance. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about multi-group confirmatory factor analysis and structural equation modeling. If you did, then please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to check out the description for additional free resources and I'll see you next time.